Praise God, YouTube. Listen, thank you for praying for me the other night. My YouTube debut opening live went well. It, it was um, all glory to God. God pulled that off through your prayers, the whole thing. I'm thankful. I'm telling you, I'm thankful. So anyway, this is this is a quick video that... I always feel like I don't explain it fully the way I want to. So I'm just going to give it a quick version right now and try to do that. You got Genesis 3, okay? God said, her seed will crush your head. We know this. So the ultimate son of promise is Jesus Christ. He's the promised son that would come and redeem mankind, reconcile God with mankind again because of Adam's sin. We were cut off the seed of the woman, the promised son, the ultimate promise would become one of us so we could become one of him. It, it's amazing. So, Jesus is the ultimate son of promise. Now, to get this going, the beginning of redemption story, God had to call Abraham, and now he's going to start the line of the woman's seed that would ultimately usher in Messiah. So, you know, God called Abraham at 75 years old. They waited 25 years. God waited 25 years to bring in the first son of promise that gets this line going. I mean, just think about 25 years. I mean, I'm 56. That would put me back at 31 years old. I mean, it's kind of a long time. 25 years, God made him wait. So when I went to bed that night, I said, and that thought popped in my head, why was Isaac's birth at an appointed time in the time of life? It didn't make sense. Like, they had 25 years. He could have been born at any time. And listen, here's the proof. Esau and Jacob, born no appointed time, just born, no appointed time. Joseph, no appointed time. Uh, Samson, no appointed time. Samuel, no appointed time. McCall, Saul's daughter who represents Satan, she stayed barren and there was nothing about her birth that was an appointed time. So the next one, uh-oh, here's another one. Here's an unnamed woman and an unnamed son, the Shunammite woman's son. This one is an appointed time in the time of life exactly the same as Isaac. Pointed time, time of life, two times for Isaac. Pointed time, time of life, two times for the Shunammite son. So God made two of the same references to both sons. Why? We're not named because the church was a mystery. So all these barren women had monumental children. Isaac, Esau, Jacob, Joseph, Samson, Samuel, and then John the Baptist, the last one. So you got an unnamed Shunammite woman and her son, but they get the appointment in the time of life. So th this is absolutely incredible. So the proof of the thought that popped in my head, Isaac's birth did not have to be an appointed time at the time of life because all the other ones weren't except the Shunammite. So it has to mean something. So here's my thought. Out of all the chapters of the books that Paul wrote, all his epistles, what's the one chapter that God has him write in the fullness of time God sent his son into the world. It's Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Galatians 4, 4 to be exact. And there's our number four now that I'm thinking about it. Four times the time of life is mentioned. Two for Isaac, two for the Shunammite. 
Here Jesus is in Galatians 4.4. 4. I'm just putting this together now as I'm doing this video. Think about that. So Galatians 4.28 is Paul saying, we are like Isaac, the children of promise. So you got the ultimate son of promise. God said, I promise a son. It's his son. It's his only begotten son. He promises a son that will reconcile himself to mankind, all the ones that will ultimately be saved. It has to start on the human line. That's Isaac, appointed time, time of life. And then the Shunammite, appointed time, time of life. So we will be raptured at the time of life. That's Isaac's birth right in the beginning. I did the whole scenario. Jacob and Esau, it'll turn back to Israel. So the typology is now it's to the Jews. They'll have two nations. Joseph will come in and save the day for the remnant. Samson, the strong man, will wipe people out in the tribulation. If you don't believe that Jesus is literally going to wipe people out and kill them and blood will be spilled, he better reread it because he's going to. Samuel, the prophet, warned the people, you don't want a king. You don't want a king. You want God to rule you. Oh no, Moses and Elijah will be warning the people, don't take Antichrist as king. Don't take Antichrist as king. Take God. They're going to be preaching the kingdom of God on earth. So they're going to be given the warnings. Perfect typology. Michal, Michal, the wife of David, the barren daughter of Saul who never had children. That will be like Satan just wiping out all his seed like he was barren. And then the Shunammite is an appointment because the second coming is an appointed time. So the rapture is an appointed time. The second coming is an appointed time. But here's my point. God put it in Galatians 4.4. 4. He said, in the fullness of time, he sent his son into the world. So the appointed time, the time of life, and the fullness of time, all the same day. This is what I'm thinking. So let's just say it is Elul 25, and it is 9-11. So here's the theory. The first day of creation is the time of life. Christ was born on that first day of creation. Let's say it's 9-11 for sake of argument. Isaac was born on that day. We will be born on that day just like the Shunammite son was born on that day. It's all the same day. The Bible says when the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So people always translated that as when that last Gentile gets saved, then God will pull, pull the trigger on the rapture like it's a random day. No, God's going to make the last Gentile come in when the fullness of the Gentiles come in. When the fullness of time, God sent his son into the world, it's the equivalent to at the appointed time in the time of life. So it's all the same. The first day of creation, Isaac's birth, Christ's birth, our rapture birth, the Shunammite birth, all of it. It's all appointed by God perfectly. That's the puzzle put together. Praise God. Let's go.